Hey guys, founder from Cricket Fanatics Magazine here. And today, another special guest. I'm here with Tando and Tini. You guys will know him from various ways of playing cricket. You've seen him in the Cobras shirt, you've seen him in the Western Province shirt, you've seen him play for Weinberg Boys, Paul Rocks, etc. So it's an amazing, amazing opportunity for me and for you guys to get to know him a little bit better. I've had a few conversations with him before, but let's try to get some information out of him so that you guys can get to know him better. So first of all, how's the Tando? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Ben. How's lockdown treating you? Uh, lockdown's been alright. It's been good. It's been productive. Getting some schoolwork done, some gym work, some family time, and um, volunteering for grocery runs just to get some food. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, it's been it's been alright. Huh? Surviving. Can't complain. I see. I see you. I caught you on one on on the way to one of your trips to the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, you did. I so to find a parking spot quickly. Just so I can speak to you. Yeah, cool, awesome. It's good to stay safe and everything. So, um, with regards to cricket and training during lockdown, um, can you maybe give me some insight into that and how some advice to younger cricketers? Um, obviously, like it's difficult when it comes to actually like actually training for cricket, uh, bowling and batting and stuff, fielding and all that's difficult because like I don't have a net at home and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um. But I am fortunate that I do have a gym at home with all the necessary equipment. So I've been using that to stay fit. And my dad is not giving me a break. So he's always on my tail the whole time. So I've been working out quite a bit. So my fitness levels are up there. So with anything that can come up, whether it's National Academy or whatever, and all sorts, I'm ready. I'm good. I'm good good condition um feeling good it's just that might be a little bit rusty when it comes to the actual physical stuff of the game um but when it comes to the fitness side and the mental side i can definitely say that i'm stronger and better and i'm looking forward to the new season if we have a season yeah yo it's crazy the way <laughs> everything's going at the moment nobody knows yes. anything yeah. yeah, well, if your dad's giving you a hard time, you must have done made that pad up there or not pad up and let a bowl of your beamers at him, man. Like, say you want to practice your bowling. <laughs> I wish it was that easy, eh? I wish it was that easy. Yeah, so, so Tando, um, did you guys get programs from your coaches, etc.? Now you've moved, obviously, to the Titans. Um, did you guys get um, programs? Yeah, or? like, the coaches from the management, I should say, from, from the Titans group have been very proactive. And also CSA as well, since I'm part of National Academy this year again. So we do have programs and stuff that we have to do on a weekly basis. And we have to we have to send the stuff through to the fitness trainer so he can keep track of our workloads and everything. So mm -hmm. we do have programs in place. So CSA and the franchise were very proactive in keeping us busy. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, let's just go through a little bit of the beginning of your career to give people understanding because your upbringing was a little bit different to the general person's story. Um, a lot of people have that uh, that question where they play cricket with their, with their father or their brothers in the backyard and that's how they got into cricket. Yours is a little yeah. bit different. So just give us your insight into how your cricket career started, your exposure at a young age, especially with your father being who he is. Um. To be honest, it's not, I'm not really like living a normal teenage life because like mm. since a young age, I've always kind of been in the spotlight and everything. So like doing the normal things a normal teen would do or, or kind of like, uh, I wouldn't say prohibit, prohibited, but like I was, you know, watched, I was you now so missing a lot of school, like preschool days, primary school days. And since my cricket career took off in, uh, into a serious direction from playing for SN19. So high school also from grade 11, when I made the side, um, missing a lot of school there. So when it comes to socializing and going out and chilling with friends and all that, I don't really have that much leisure time mm. on my hands because it was always from a young age, I uh, traveled with my dad, then 
when he's not playing, I'm back at school mm. and all that. And then when I was at an age where I can be at school while he's traveling, then on school holidays, I'd go away. So I would never spend like free time, like yeah. the holidays at home with friends, like the normal kids would or Christmas time or New Year's and all that. So I've always been on the road and I could definitely say I spent my first Christmas at home in 20, 2016. Sure. That was the first time I spent Christmas at home. Um, it was always on the move with my dad, whether commentary or when he worked at, when he worked for Zimbabwe, when he played, etc. and stuff. So it's been tough at times, but like I had to adapt and adjust and with the free time that I do have, I try to use it to the best of my ability, spend it with friends and family. And, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, so obviously it's difficult for you to maybe go back and remember some of your days when you were younger, five, six years old, you know, hotel rooms, etc. There's Proteus players around you all the time. Tell me what that was like. Um, um, any interesting stories from those days when you were you know, around your it- father? No, born into that environment and from a very young age and growing up and being around such people, it doesn't really sink in until this age where you're like, okay, cool. I I was around legends of the game mm. almost 24-7 for 11 years, 11, 12 years, you mm. know? And it doesn't really sink in but when you're a kid because... You just want to have fun. You just want to make friends and play in the lobbies and stuff like that. And just, you know, so I I can definitely say for the longest part of my dad's cricket career, uh, I barely watched cricket. When I was at the stadium, I was always on the move, playing with other kids and stuff. And only going back up to the box when it's lunchtime or tea time just to grab a snack or whatever. But... Um, if that was the case now, I would definitely use the opportunity, um, to, to make those moments a lot more valuable, you know, to Mm. be in those prime moments. But obviously, I guess I wouldn't have the passion for the game if I didn't go through all of that at such a young age and and be surrounded by greats of the game and obviously as a child they play with you and stuff you know just to entertain you but they don't know how much influence that has in your development you know so I can say I was I'm very privileged to to have been part of that setup from pretty much birth yeah. yeah so you you mentioned to me before privately we spoke and you told me like you played some corridor like corridor cricket in a way like you know tells who were some of the guys that you played with um when you were you know tell me. um geez a couple of guys um Herschel gibbs neil mckenzie um sean pollock um i don't know probably say Graham Smith, Callis, uh, all those guys, you know. So like all mm. the old guys, like the veterans that were playing in that time. I've probably missed a few guys, you know. <laughs> yeah. But um, there were a lot of people that that influenced me into into playing cricket, and mm. they took time to actually play with me as a kid and stuff like that. Yeah. So it was it was really good. So I do remember a few moments, you know, but obviously it's all blurry when you're four, yeah. five, six years old, you know. Yeah. So let's move on to you on your journey. Um, the first time we had a chat was when you were still at Salborn. You were 14, 15 years old. Um, you were trying to make the decision on whether you wanted to move down to Cape Town or not, or where you're going to take your career forward. When I interviewed you, you were majority. You wanted to be a batsman, and that was your your dream to play because you were batting in the top five, and a lot of people don't know that about you. Um, that you were actually batting up the order, etc. So tell me about your, your schooling career as a cricketer and your dreams then and how they've changed compared to now. Um, I never bowled, to be honest, from like when I started 
grade one all the way to like grade 10 grade 10 uh under uh, under 15 didn't bowl so all the way from playing under nine to under 15 cricket never used to bowl used to bat three or open the batting majority of the guys i've played against cape schools always say when we meet up that i used to you know bat up there and they're shocked now that i've converted into a bowler and stuff so um i guess like the the switch up kind of changes when you go into a new environment i guess um Mm -hmm. but obviously with time as time goes by i'm gonna try and you know to harness that old skill that i have because i can definitely say that i've i've been focused on it as much as i did growing up because like that's all i wanted to do but now like the main focus and attention has always been on my bowling since i i left east london you know mm-hmm. so in the next couple of years i'm definitely putting in a lot more work to become an all-rounder you know so yeah. because i definitely say I, I do have the potential to become that person you know in in the sport especially as as a player of color to be an all-rounder it's, they, there's not many of them in the setup so um if i can be able to to harness that skill and nurture it and put in a little bit more time into it and focus into it as i would with my bowling then in a couple of years i will be where i want to be you know yeah um i don't know how much it's got to do with it but you also shot up from height wise do you think that that maybe you you got a lot taller when you came grade 11 matric do you think that has um, something to do with it with why they transitioned you to a bowler probably because like majority of my high school career i was really short yeah uh, so like being a batter was just like first instinct and then towards like end of grade 10 where I just shot up drastically. Then when I went, when I made my move to Cape Town, then it was like an automatic move to to try and become a fast bowler, you know? Yeah. Um, so I kind of just took that as it is. Um, but like, I still enjoy my batting way more than I do with my bowling, um, you know? But obviously now, my career does say that my prime skill is my bowling abilities, you know. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of potential to work with. And I feel as if I can become that person who can become an all-rounder in this country in, in a couple of years' time. Cool. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go into the questions from the fans soon because this, a lot is coming in at the moment. Um, but I can't I'm not anything asking... from my side, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, not, not yet. So that's good because I like to show it on the screen and what they're asking. Um, so personally, let me just ask you, your move to Cape Town, what was it like? How did you enjoy staying in Cape Town and the transition to Wambu Boys, of course? Um, moving to Cape Town was an interesting move, but I genuinely felt like it was a good move because playing in Cape schools for a couple of years. Um, you kind of see which schools are better cricketing schools. So I kind of decided after my first first team Cape schools that um, I'm going to move. And I got a few offers from the various schools, but I went with Weinberg and I've really enjoyed that just transition from where I was, just from the school in general, the people in the school, like the guys were really accommodating and I just like settled in so quickly. And like to all the guys that made 
my first couple months at Weinberg, what they were, I, I really valued those guys quite a lot in my life and I'm still friends with all of them. Mm. And even now that I'm out of school, I, I still keep contact with a few of the guys, um, which is really good. So yeah, my move to Cape Town was probably the best move I could ever make for myself and for my creep career. Because since I've moved there, I've, I've grown in leaps and bounds. So it's been unreal. And with regards to Western Province, moving into the Western Province team, who are some of the friends that you made, etc., and who helped it make it easy for you to transition into the Western Province side? Um, obviously, majority of the guys who are in the Western Province side were from the various schools which I've played against. And yeah. so yeah. majority of the guys. So my first Coke week, there were about... Eight Wambuk boys in the province side, so I was pretty much playing in my school's first team side. Um, and then a few guys from Bosch and Western Province Sports School. So I knew everyone. So playing for province and playing in that environment was really easy because I gelled with everyone and I was pretty much met with everyone. And that was that was really good for my my development. And that was pretty much the trend when I was playing Coke Week, that majority of the players were from the two schools, uh, Weinberg and Rondebosch. So obviously with, the, with the, the battles we have between the two schools, you become very fond of the certain guys. So playing for province was super easy. Yeah, so, um, you know, you I've, I've noticed that you have quite a few friends in that in that team some close-knit friends in that team we did one of your friends earlier at the one of our first interviews was Bunga Makaka and you gave him some some comments in that in that interview he really enjoyed it so tell, tell me about Bonga you enjoy his banter with him um I've known Bonga before I moved to Cape Town um met him at under 17 week and then we played in the same SA under 17 side of Cubs week and then we've kind of became close friends and to find out that he was also a Wambu boy that just made everything a lot easier and that he also stayed at, at hostel even though I didn't stay at hostel for, for too long. I was only there for six months. But um, Bonga has always been a type of person where I can motivate him and motivate myself. Mm -hmm. And... I literally got, before I moved to Cape Town, I literally got strict orders from his mom. And she was like, um, I know my son tends to drift a lot, but please, can you put him in line and make sure he does everything he needs to do and please guide him. So basically, I had weight on my shoulders before I even got to Cape Town to look after this man. Um, but through all of that, we, we've had some good times some tough times you know but we're still very good mates you know um and we push each other to do better in from our schoolwork to our lives to our the decisions we make and everything but like if you know for the two of us the people that always kept us in track was csb and Mr. Graham October, those were like our two parents in Cape Town. Mm. And they were so tough on us sometimes. Uh, but obviously that pushed me and Bonga to be closer and closer by the day and to work to work in partnership to, to achieve our dreams and stuff. And, you know, my training to make S and a 19, Bonga was there every morning every evening working hard with me you know and then when he was training to make his debut for SN19 I was there as well working with him so we do have a lot of uh, input and helping hand in our careers you know so we wouldn't be where we both are if it wasn't for some of the things we've done for each other okay cool so yeah, so we just, let's just get into one of the questions quickly. I just wanted to ask you about your time with the Cobras. What was that like and how, how was it like to, to play with the Cobras, of course? 
Um, playing for the Cobras, it came by surprise because I got told um, after uh, after the Northern's one day game. Um, so I was re- I was really shocked. But a person that leaked the news before I was actually told was Saki, and I did not believe him one bit. Because I was like, Stucky, please don't make jokes like this, dude, because this is actually affecting my feelings right now. Because I'm not sure whether to believe you or not. And off, and that was like at lunchtime, because he was part of the Cobra squad then, so he was part of the part of the part of the chat and everything. So when he told me I did not believe him, but um carried on playing and that was kind of like if it was true that kind of like motivated me to to bowl and bet the way I did um, even though we, we still lost but like I thought it was if I was in a good position physically and mentally and the way I was playing and then after the game uh, coach Paul and Dieter were like uh, you got a call up to the Cobras and they leave tomorrow and the time then was like six o'clock in, in the evening. Yeah. So I was excited. I was nervous. I didn't know what to do. And like told my parents that like, I got a call up to the Cobras. They were also really ecstatic. And it was just like a complete dream come true. Like when I got my my, my traveling clothes and my match kit and my yeah. helmet in the morning, when I got to Newland, it was like the feeling settled in because the whole night I could not believe it and I could not sleep. I was anxious, so anxious. I couldn't sleep, but um, they made me feel welcome. They made me feel at ease. Um, and we played in PMB, so it was a tough ground. It was super flat. Um, but we managed to, to play well, picked up three wickets in the game. So that was a great start to my to my franchise career, and I just felt at home, so which was really really nice. Yeah, and there was an awesome interview with SuperSport when you took those wickets, and and your father was present, and the smiles on both of your faces. Can you tell me about that and what that felt like to be there, interviewed with your dad there, and chatting about those wickets that you took? Um, to be honest, I. I went to my dad's room at the hotel in um, we were going play in Oswaran, yes. Uh, the night before, really nervous, and he just calmed me down and just look here, don't think about it before you sleep. Just switch your phone off and don't think about cricket. So I did exactly that. Had a peaceful sleep. Woke up in the morning, and when. I, I woke up, I was extremely nervous knowing that um, I would be making my one day debut on TV with my dad being there. So my whole family's watching, friends and family, like that's so much pressure. But uh, I was like, you know what, it's actually a, a perfect place to to showcase your name and make a name for yourself, you know. So in the morning of the game, during the warm up. With me being so nervous, I literally, literally forgot how to bowl. So thank God my dad was there, and he helped me out, calmed me down, and yeah, that was really pleasing to to be part of and to have him there watching me bowl and commentate while I'm bowling. You know, that was a uh, motivation that this is actually a a dream come true and it's, it's make or break here so picking up those four wickets I'm lucky not being able to finish my spell because I genuinely felt like I could have picked up five you mm. know because the very next ball after I went off it was a wicket by Jason Smith you know but for him to be there and the way he spoke after the game was just breathtaking yeah so I'm going to go into a question from one of the fans. Um, Tim, the cricket guy, wanted to ask, um, Hi, Tando, what made you make the decision to move from the Cobras to the Titans? Um, 
to be honest, I the move was a career move. To be honest, um, I wanted something new, a new challenge, um, a new environment, you know, a new city to to explore and see where it takes me. It's a leap of faith uh, because I don't know how it's, it's gonna go, but I'm very positive about the decision I've made. Uh, my stay at the Cobras has been n nothing but magical. Um, and at the Titans, what I'm really lo looking forward to is to be part of, to be part of the structure, to be part of the, you know, a winning mindset, you know, the, the challenges, because to see that they have been the top sides for, for a while now, you know, just to be part of that. Uh, so for me, it was just a, a change of environment and uh, seeking a new challenge and new opportunities. Cool. And another one is from Ravi. He says, hey, Tando, congrats on a superb start to your career. Do you have any ambitions to play test cricket or do you consider yourself strictly a white ball player? To be honest, I prefer red ball cricket more than white ball cricket. Awesome. Um, so, yes, I do consider myself... I would love to play test cricket. Yes, that's that's the dream, ambition, a goal um, that I would like to, to achieve in the next three years uh, is to play for the pro tiers, hopefully in all formats. If all come, if all works out the way, I would like it to work out with my work ethic and the performances that I want to put in. So yes, I I would love to play test cricket. Yeah, and he actually had a follow-up question about are you working hard towards clocking 150 kilometers per hour on your speed gun? You are high on 130s at the moment if memory serves him correctly. Um, yeah, is there any methods that you guys have, at bowlers, fast bowlers, to make you guys a little bit faster in your bowling? Uh, 150s, that's fast, guys. Yo, um, <laughs> to be honest, at the age I am, I'm not really focused on how fast I can bowl you know I'm just trying to you know improve my skill you know and get stronger and get fitter and be injury free so I can be able to to last you know for a whole season without having problems and breaking down and stuff like that which I haven't had a, a problem of for a couple years now um, but bowling quick is not about what you guys normally think it is. You know, it's if it clicks on the day and your rhythm's feeling good, you're feeling strong, you're feeling solid at the crease and everything is aligned, then it kind of happens naturally without you even thinking about it or trying, you know. So when you do think about trying to bowl fast, most of the time, it doesn't happen the way you want it to, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's all about rhythm and feel and, you know, just everything coming together on the day. Cool. We have a question here from Coach C. himself. How's Bunga on the short ball versus side up? <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> but, um... I won't lie, he will take you on because he is a ego player. I know him because I spent most of my time with, with him. Um, he will definitely take you on, coach. I can tell you that. But a chance of be hitting him very high. Um, but at the moment, it's 50 50. It's either he hits you or you hit him. So I can't cool. make the call. But okay, I would cool. love I'm, to be there, though. I'm going to ask him as well. How's the Bunga? <laughs> <laughs> How's it, pal? <laughs> Yo, he's a shaky warrior on the short ball. Shaky warrior. <laughs> but he's got him better over the days. Yeah. How are you doing, Boga, man? I can see you having a little bit of connection issues here. Um, he's a bit stuck. It looks like it's stuck. Right? Looks like he's stuck a bit. I told him to restart his modem, man. That's closer to the modem. <laughs> That's to me. Uh, we're going to try to get him back. He's reconnecting. But yeah, I thought I'll bring him on here as a good mate of yours. So 
thought I'll get him on here to give you some banter. Um, let's go into one more um, question so far. Um, another person that knows you quite well recently is Amara. She says, do enlighten us on how to achieve that famous swag walk of yours. <laughs> Guys, I don't have a swag walk, to be honest. I do not have a swag walk whatsoever. Um, that spring and bounce. Um, it's natural, guys. You, you can't yeah. practice it. You just either you have it or, or you don't. Uh, so yeah. It's like another person that has a similar walk is Daisy. Daisy is the exact same, but he's only just more emphasized. Yeah, you're gonna be playing with Daisy now. That's that's gonna be an interesting one as well. Um, are you excited to play with him again or be involved with him again? Yeah, me and Daisy are close mates. Like even when I do go to Pretoria, uh, he's the first person I call. We, we hang out, lunch, whatever, just catch up and stuff, you know. So me and Dave, and when you found out that I'm actually moving across, I'm excited. Um, yeah, so playing with each other at National Academy just made our friendship even stronger. And now that I'm going to be playing with him, just makes things a lot better. Yeah, um, yeah. let's go into it a little bit more until we get Bonga back. Um, I think let's go with another one from Coach. He says, Fat Harry's ribs or banana jam pizza? Fat Harry's ribs. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Fat Harry's ribs. All day, every day. Banana jam, not so great. Uh, and then we've got one from Daniel. Um, he wants to know, turn roof or boogies? Neither. <laughs> Neither. Dirty places that, yo. Oh. <laughs> Where were your places that you like to like to, like to go jewel as you would say? I stay indoors, sir. Me, I stay <laughs> indoors. The streets will not see me anytime soon. <laughs> um, another one for the term, the cricket guy, your most important coach at Wamburg. <clears throat> Most important coach at Wamberg. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a bit of a juggle. Um, I can definitely say playing under Mr. Lefson, it was always tough because he will always have a go at you, no matter what. And you're always playing to prove a point. So, as a team, we always played to prove a point because he will press buttons that will make you very uncomfortable or feel uncomfortable and not always the best of chat at times, but I can definitely say he was one of the toughest coaches to play under. Um, so, playing with... playing under his leadership as a as a head coach always played to to prove a point and always show that you are the main man in that team and if all 11 players were doing that then we were beating every single team we came across and as a result we were second in the country for the whole season and we lost to St. Stuthians in the T20 schools and I genuinely feel if we beaten them we would have been number one in the country but we really had a gun side that was always trying to prove a point and always push the boundaries and challenge each other yeah so we've got Bonga back again you can actually good you bought now. Daughter, fam. I'm glad you bought daughter hey man Wi-Fi struggles bro <laughs> my bad my bad guys Sorry, yeah, so sorry. Tando said these emotional words about you before you came on. Um, this it really made me tear a bit. Um, so I don't cry years. now, mate. Come on, <laughs> <you're teasing. laughs> ah, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> nah I, I heard a, I heard a bit of, of what you were saying at the um, before my wife first started acting up. Um, but yeah, really, really um, inspiring words there from Mr. Tini. We go way back, so. I'm not surprised. Still a clown. I'll never change. <laughs>
Poga, you have any questions for Thunder over here? Oh, me? Yeah, you. Um, what do you have to say? Let's no, see. I... Let's hear. Let's hear what you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, nothing more than um, how 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 is he gonna um progress himself to be ready for national cricket? Um, I can definitely say the formula to cricket will stay the same. It's always been for how, however long cricket's been around. Put in the hard yards, you train at the right intensity, you'll be ready for anything. But obviously, test cricket, international cricket is a different ballgame completely. But the best you can do is try and train at that intensity f for as long as possible. Push yourself, test yourself, test your mental side. Because obviously it's not going to be a walk in a park, especially if you're going to be uh, if you're going to be in a, in, in an international setup as a youngster and as a new guy around the block. So um, if you keep doing the right things right, your fitness levels are high, you're training at the right intensity, you've got the right people around you, your performances are speaking for themselves. And you're just doing all that and keeping humble, then Mother Cricket will look after you know, and then everything will fall into place. And it's all about work ethic, you know. So if you can tick as many boxes as possible when people are watching, it will pay off in the middle, and it will definitely take you to places you never dreamed of going, and it it will surprise you just by the time and effort and the care you put into your work, your training, your diet, stuff like that, and the people you surround yourself with, the chats you have with people. I always try and have, you know, chats that will build my character, will grow me a bit in terms of how I think and how I go about my business. Because as most coaches say, 90% of cricket is played between your ears and not yes, actually physically doing it. So if I can make sure that I've got that covered, then the world is my oyster. It's an amazing answer, bro. Um, Bonga, are you still with us? You seem to have been having data kicks again. No, I'm still here. I'm still here, man. I'm still here. Just having a couple of issues, but I'm still here. Yeah. Um, we here, so man. So, Tando, a nice comment then came from Mr. Graham October. He says, thank you for the nice messages you sent me. Um, and you, both of you have really been affected by him and Coach Sia. And Coach Sia has also put on, on the screen that he says, thank you for the interview with both of you guys. He's really proud of the men you have become in More to Life. Um, so let's start with Mr. Graham October over there, man. Um, t tell me about him and his influence on your, on your, on your career and, yeah. Mr. October, Mr. October has known me since I was like 13, going to like those Black African camps in Forte. Um, so I was, you know, I got close to him then, and then he kind of took over the move when I told him that I want to come to Cape Town when I was at the National Weeks. So he kind of put things into place uh, on the cricket department side. And uh, when I got there, I just literally just slotted in to the whole Western province setup. And he's been a father figure uh, on and off the field. Um, he's very tough on me, but but he, he's done all that through love and through care, you know. So all the, all the efforts he's put in for me over the years have had a great contribution to where I am today as a human, a character, and as a cricket player. Same as with Coach Sia. Those were the two people I can say were parents to me in, in Cape Town. And not to forget Sandman. Um, Sandman is Sia's right-hand man, but he was also <laughs> a brother to me there in Cape Town. And where's Sia Guma? 
Uh, he's also like he's been there when I needed him most, you know. And he he helped me get a coaching gig at Ronda Bosch when I needed to make some spare some spare cash while I was doing my gap year. So everyone has had a significant contribution, but these two people have have done literally the most for me throughout my time in Cape Town and still now moving forward. Yeah, so we've got another one from Mo Manak. He wants to know how important is straight lines as a fast bowler and how have you worked on it? Hello, Mo. Uh, long time no see, pal. Um, <laughs> I don't know, straight lines, working in straight lines is easier <laughs> and it makes things faster, quicker. You get from point A to point B a lot faster than going sideways. Straight lines, I don't know what more to say, but like, it just makes everything work a lot easier. And then from Tom the Cricket guy, he wants to know a Yorker or a bouncer, which one do you prefer? Back my Yorker all the way. <laughs> yeah, like that, especially I wanted to know about the, the Paul Rocks. I saw you after the Paul Rocks won the trophy and you were very emotional with, your, with, with the fans and the players. That experience to you, what did that do for you? And how much motivation did it give you? Um, <clears throat> I can definitely say being in the Paul Rocks team was a blessing. Uh, but not playing the whole tournament was was really, really, really frustrating. Mm. Um, it got me emotional a lot of times during the campaign. You know, when I would speak to guys like Sibs, Mangi, the coach, Coach Toyana, you know, spoke to Faf a few times, spoke to JP, Russell, you know. So I spoke to a lot of people in that uh, Power Rocks changing room, you know, because as a young player coming into that setup, it's overwhelming, number one. Uh, it's the biggest stage I've played in in my life. I've been part of, let me say. Um, the intensity is different. The environment is different. And I obviously would have loved to be part of a game, you know. Um, but just being in that environment, a lot of people dream to be part of that environment and I was privileged enough to be there and I guess um, I can say probably I wasn't ready or wasn't at the level uh, I needed to be to make the starting 11 but it was probably like um, a, a 10 week uh, learning lesson a 10 week class to to make me a better cricketer make me understand the game more you know work on my skills in different precious situations at training our uh, internal games playing against each other training at night you know playing under lights being part of that whole setup and just feeling the pressure of being at such a level playing with majority international players from across the globe um and being able to to feed off those guys so even though i didn't play a single game um being part of that whole campaign and winning it was very emotional um yeah so it was it was really good yeah we're gonna just sign up by start giving bunga one more chance to redeem himself the bunga you back out again hopefully for a little longer time <laughs> Fuck, man. Sorry. Excuse my <laughs> so, this is what you were talking about. His mother was asking you to obviously like look after him, etc. Is this what you were talking about? <laughs> he knows it. He knows it. That's the thing. Can't hide from it. Can't hide. From so, Bunga, tell me, man. Tell me about Tando and um, what it's been like to be around him in teams, etc. How it's been. What type of inspiration he's been like you. For you off the field they said as well <clears throat> um obviously I've, I've known tando i think um as far as like friends from cape town no sound more than anyone <laughs> before you got Bongo, we before, can't hear you. before you got to cape town. i can hear you oh, okay <laughs> you can hear me oh um so obviously 
so that was that was quite um a start of a relationship for us um i remember in cubs week where we actually felt like in person we got along very well and um took that friendship all the way to school and um obviously training together like motivating each other um definitely it was something that i needed personally at that time of my career because he's so focused man and he knew exactly like what he needed to do to be successful yes. okay so we lost him again <laughs> <laughs> Shock. <laughs> so, uh, him, so I hope it was all good, eh? Yeah, it was actually all good. He was talking about your um, how you've inspired him in his career, now driven you on, how you are. We will try to do a series next sometime again with him and you together. You guys can have a little banter against each other. Um, where we can have a little conversation about that. Um, oh, I don't know. Uh, when the guards, I'm gonna ask you one more question from the fans now. Is Tando, do you have a preferred Premier League team? And tell me, you are United. Ah, no. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. So, like, you just you disappointed them completely there uh, because obviously we Man United fans, massive, massive Man United fans against City. When did you start becoming a City fan? That's the question. Twenty thirteen. So when they started winning, okay. So um, <laughs> so uh, over here, there's another one of you. I seem to find it again. There's so many other questions. Um, if you had to pick between um Ronaldo or Messi, who would you? Messi, thank you. Completely Messi. I thought you would have been more of a Ronaldo fan with all his work no ethic chance. and no chance. Wow, this is a legend, guys. Absolutely. <laughs> And uh, uh, finally, from um, Daniel, he says, um, "Do you have sugar on your toast?" Uh, it depends how I'm feeling on the day. Oh, tea time. I can definitely say I put seven sugars in my cup of coffee. Sure. Um, sugar on toast. It was more of my dad's thing. Um, so, no, I do not put sugar on my toast. It's a gun combination, though, I can tell you that. But Yo, you've had a, I've had um, banana, with, um, banana with peanut butter. Shoot. Toast, butter, sugar on top. Gun. I'm going to try that. Actually, that's a good idea, maybe. Um, so, what? I'm getting messages here from other people asking me about okay cool yeah so we've got a lot of opportunities going down the line guys thank you for tuning in for, because i mean I, i'm sorry that i have to cut it short now because i mean bonga is i mean bonga messed up the whole last part of the, of the interview by not being able to come on but it's all right and also tando has a whole shopping list to go get to he's on his shopping run um what sort of stuff is on your list how much of that is actually um um what's it luxuries you know i did majority of my food shopping yesterday but i came <laughs> to get stuff for so i can study better so i need some stationery and stuff yeah um and some content to finish off my assignments and stuff yeah so getting some schoolwork and i'm trying to find where i can get ink for the printer at home yeah, so your your spare time has mainly been studying, training. You haven't really had the opportunity to actually um, do any other fun stuff. Have you been watching Netflix or playing PlayStation, etc.? Uh, played PlayStation for the first weekend, and then I finished uh, Money Heist in like four days, part one to part four. That's me. So I was what on the show, and I wasn't disturbed for a full four days. Uh, my sleeping habits have been yeah, out the window. Feel you. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to keep as healthy and motivated as possible because, like, studying in this time 
and training in this time it's difficult but you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do to, to yeah to win. money yeah. money as was amazing eh? money as to exactly. I, I didn't i thought the hype was for nothing but until i actually watched it no no it's it's, it's great it's just the one of the best i've watched in a very very long time yeah awesome so thanks a lot for this interview tando um i'm hoping no that you can I hope, I'm hoping we can get that one with you and Bonga down the line, a more fun interview, more, you know, have a little bit of fun with that one. I'll, I'll get in contact with you when we do do that. To the guys out there, to the fans out there, we will be putting this video on our website for you guys to watch back. And then Putando, obviously, to um, give it to his friends and family that haven't seen it yet. Lastly, Tando, just a message to the Cricket Fanatics fans that asked me to get you on here. Um, to everyone that watched, thank you very much. Um, Thank you to everyone that supported me on my cricket journey and those who are still supporting me. Um, sorry for letting those down that thought I would stay at the Cobras. Um, got no bad blood towards the Cobras whatsoever. But uh, to everyone that supported me during my times of playing at Newlands and everything, I uh, appreciate you guys a lot. Much love. Um, and during this epidemic, I hope everyone is keeping safe and uh, making sure they're staying healthy and fit and stay safe guys never give up on your dreams and yeah just keep up the good work thanks a lot Tano. i'll chat to you again right. cheers, cheers. Cheers.